Golf is more than a game to me. On a practical sense, I suppose it's been my career. That's how I've earned my living. But from an emotional sense and just what it, I guess it's meant to my life, the traveling around the world has been an incredible experience. But I guess it's really meeting so many varied and interesting people from the most humble out in Sri Lanka where we designed a new course all the way through to meeting some you know, fairly influential people in the game of golf. It's been far more than just a game. I'm Martin Ebert, a golf course designer, and golf is more than a game to me. I had no family history of playing golf. It was really watching it on television, thinking, God, oh, that seems quite a decent game. I'd love to have a go at that. Mum and Dad bought me a 10 pound set of secondhand clubs. Just that thrill of hitting a decent shot, I guess, grabbed me at that point. You know, from there on, it was off to university and getting some university team golf in. So that was you know, a wonderful start, I suppose, in appreciating great golf courses and great landscapes. As a youngster, you know, when I started playing the game, I do remember sort of drawing up these plans or had any inkling of becoming a golf course designer. When I wasn't playing golf at university, it was studying the discipline of engineering, which I think I enjoyed the plan drawing side of that. So that has fed through into what I do now. And when I started with Donald Steele, so that was where I got my opportunity. Tom, who's now my current partner, was Donald's assistant at that time. And Tom came at it from a very much a landscape architecture point of view. I came at it from more of an engineering point of view. It was left to Tom and myself to work out how to define our vision for the courses on paper. And Tom had you know, fantastic skills at sketching and producing beautiful artistic pieces. And I was hopeless at that. So I had to develop a different technique and that was really playing about with contours. And so that engineering background, I think helped me a lot with that. As a result, that is now the way that we carry out our designs. We've defined things very accurately with contours. We play with the excavator of our mind in terms of visualizing what we want and putting it down on paper. That's not to say we don't make some adjustments after that, but very much we want to define things with as much accuracy as we can. And that background in engineering certainly has stood me in good stead for that. The importance of it, I suppose, when you think of you know, golfers, it's where they gain their enjoyment. So it's so critical that we maximize that enjoyment through the work that we do on the course and get the balance right. It mustn't be too difficult. It mustn't be too easy. It must be stimulating. People must look forward to going out there and hitting those shots. Our work can all contribute to that. I've been fortunate in advising a number of championship venues, a number of open venues. So it's so important in that respect to ensure that the test is going to be appropriate for the world's best golfers. Achieving a balance between the world's best players' enjoyment and everyday golfers' enjoyment, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but I think it is possible. We don't want to make these championship venues impossibly difficult. It should be an arena where the world's best can show their skills, can provide everybody with birdies and eagles, as well as having the challenges of producing double bogeys and worse, potentially. Getting that right for the everyday golfer, and that, let's face it, that's going to be 99.9% .9 of the time the course is played. How can we do that? As long as landing areas are large enough, but there's features in those landing areas you, know, you need to flirt with to get the best line into a green, for instance. In general, we want to give people options to play, to have different routes available to them. Just include a bit of thinking as well as you know, the physical act of playing. We want people to be standing on tees thinking, what should I do on this hole, rather than being told exactly what to do. When fairways have become so narrow on certain courses, you're just saying you've just got to hit it in one place, basically. But similarly with really, really penal bunkering, you know, does it take the driver out of the hands completely? We'd like to have holes where people do different things from the tee, they take different clubs. When it comes to our general philosophies of design, we think it's so important working on a landscape to blend things into the landscapes. You know, we're very fortunate again to work on some really lovely pieces of ground. It's difficult to make it look completely natural. Lynx land is probably the easiest to do that and to fool people that everything is 100% natural, but you don't get bunkers in an inland setting very often. Occasionally you do with really sandy sites. So trying to make things look as natural as possible Having said that, we do want people to understand you know, the, the changes that have been made, but they should still fit the overall 18 holes and not feel like they've been just added on. 
When it comes to old courses, then making it look more old fashioned than modern and machine made. We like it to look like a man with a wheelbarrow has produced it rather than anything which is too big and bold. We like to focus on the detail of the design. We think that's the best way of really producing an effect that sits well in golfers' consciousness. What it really excites me in this business, I suppose it's standing back when the project is completed and feeling very happy with the result, to feel as though it's blending in with nature, to feel that golfers the world over, when they come to play the whole of the golf course, they really do enjoy their experience.